Welcome to another episode of Cosmic Conversations. I am your hostess, Marla Martinson, and today I'm so excited because I'm going to be talking to someone who does all the things that I love to talk about. Channeling, connecting with angels and guides. She's a psychic. She is a healer. She does a lot of things, and she's an author. So I'm talking about Tony Green. Hey, Tony! Hey! Hey, Marla. How are you? <laughs> Fantastic. Tony's in Milwaukee, I... Wisconsin, you guys. So, And I'm out here in Los Angeles. So we're just talking about how much we love the Midwest and how friendly everyone is. So shout out to all you Midwestern people watching. <laughs> so, so yes. yeah. thank you for having me on your show. You oh, are, <laughs> you're welcome. I'm so excited because so I want to, I'm so uh, fascinated uh, with all things channeling and psychic. So tell us, um, I the thing that I'm always curious about, and I'm sure my viewers are too, is how did you become a channeler and a psychic and a healer? Was this something that uh, you were born with or it developed as a child? So let's get go all the way back there and hear about that. So it's, it's really bizarre because I've been a channel my whole life and had no idea what channeling was. As a matter of fact, it was just a few years ago when I was listening to another channeler, Esther Hicks, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I went, wait, I do that. That's, that's what I do. Uh -huh. And um, But I had never done it with intention. It just happened to me. So as a child or growing up, as far back as I can remember, things would come out of my mouth that I should have had no idea, you know, about the information or the content or even half the time even understanding the content of what I was saying. So that's, that. so I've done that part my whole life. And so so just my, a, a question about that. So when you say that you saw Esther Hicks and what she's doing, you always did, were you hearing information coming through or you were actually sitting there just talking like she does for an hour or something, two people, or how did it manifest for you? So, for example, one day, and I'll leave the name of the person involved out of this, but one day I was visiting with some friends, and I was we were all getting ready to leave, and I was in my car, and I jumped, just didn't know why, just felt like I needed to do this, uh -huh. kind of guided, if you will, jumped out of my car, got into the car in front of me, into the back seat, and I looked at the person to the left of me, and I said, if you ever get arrested, don't say anything. This person looked at me and said, I won't. And I said, no. And I repeated it three or four times because when it's really important, they have me repeat it. Mm -hmm. And I said that several times to this person and then finally said, I won't. Don't worry, I'm not that stupid. Oh. I said, okay. I got out of the car and went back into my car and drove away. I never questioned or thought about why would I jump in somebody's car and a say stranger, that? A I stranger's just, car. You jumped in a stranger's car? No, I actually knew this person. Okay. okay. I actually did know this person. If it was a stranger's car, I think they probably would have kicked me out. <laughs> But I did know this person, and it is a relative, so I would rather not say which right. relative oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> so, but things like that happened quite often. And then did they get arrested? Did they get arrested? Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. And they obviously forgot the message. Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, so. And so were anybody else in your family, your mother or father or grandmother, uh, psychic or channeling too? Is it? Do you think it's a lineage? I do. I believe, well, I believe we all have it mm -hmm. to a certain extent. We have that moment where we know who's on the phone, who's right. doing this, who's doing that. We all have that. Now, my mom, in several of the houses that I grew up in, my mom would always say, oh, there's ghosts in this house. And then it would never go any further, mm -hmm. right? I was just like, okay, it's ghosts. There's ghosts. I really didn't comprehend completely what that meant mm -hmm. all the time. But I knew funny things were happening. So, but the conversation never went past, oh, there's ghosts in the house. Mm -hmm. 
Now, was, was, like, was, were your, was your mother afraid of the ghosts or it was just like, oh, there's ghosts in the house and they just live here too? Or <laughs> No, my mom loves those type of movies and all of that. Like, like she used to keep me up as a child to watch Charles Bronson with her. So yeah, ghosts weren't bugging her. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> Not at all. So um, she, it didn't bother her. She would say, you know, there's ghosts. She, I think she just felt that there was no harm. They weren't there to harm us. They were just coexisting with us. Mm-hmm. So, so when you were, when you were getting these channeled messages, was it from a certain group of entities all the same? Like Esther Hicks, it's always Abraham. Is it always the same so group? The, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, when messages come through me, I never questioned who it was because there are always messages of love and light and warnings for people. And to this day, when I ask, they laugh at me. Like, they're just like, we're angels. Uh, we're up here. Yeah, we're there. Yeah. It's like, you know, you can call us whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Okay? So your guys so, say they're angels. They say angels. Yeah, there are some. Um, okay, so I'm going to skip ahead just for a moment, and then we'll come. we can come back to this. Um when I was younger, much younger, there were some traumas or dysfunction in my family. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And never heard of that well, before. <laughs> yeah, unique. Right? <laughs> um, while this was going on, I would kind of leave my body and go back home. Mm-hmm. And so I never realized that because I don't remember a lot of my childhood. Okay. But then when I was um, the first time my instructor for hypnosis did hypnosis on me. I went back and uh, we started with the incident and then all of a sudden I'm like, I'm rocking. And she's like, where are you rocking? I'm like, in the arms of God. She's like, oh. (laughs) And then uh, she said, well, what are you doing rocking in the arms of God? And I said, I'm watching. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, what are you watching? I said, I'm watching St. Michael. He's doing his dance. She said, his dance. And I said, yes, it's a dance. It's uh, it's not what you think. It's not like you think. He just dances. So apparently, if that's to be believed as a true recall mm-hmm. through hypnosis, mm-hmm. which I do, um, I used to leave and go back home. My spirit used to go back home and watch the angels and God. And I know that we all have angels around us. I see them around people all the time. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a guide or an angel, I think it's an angel or an ascended being. It's a very, it's a being full of love, just a loving, a pure love being that sends messages through me. I know that. So when you see someone's angel, do you have like right now through Skype, can you see an angel here or would you have to tune in and try or do you just see it? Sometimes they just pop up. Other times if I focus in. Okay. So like over your uh, back shoulder, uh, your right shoulder, this one. I can instant, yep, instantly I see a hue of blue. Mm-hmm. Now to me, blue is always Michael. Mm-hmm. We call him Archangel Michael, but he's also Saint Michael. So I know that you are divinely protected. He is the he is a protector, but he does a lot more than that too. He gives us strength when we might be facing new spiritual insights, challenges, so on and so forth. But Michael is our our strength angel. Mm-hmm. Doesn't necessarily come in and take out darkness. Mm-hmm. He helps us spread. Well, I call in Archangel Michael every day. He's the only one I'm always calling. Well, I have my guardian angel, two of them who I know their names, but he is, I always call him for protection when I'm driving, for protection when I'm connecting on the spirit board to talk to them for everything. I'm calling him all the time. So he's probably now just there because I'm going to be calling. (laughs) And I can see him. I can see his, his hue, right? Um, in your, on your right, um, on your right there. So calling him in. He's coming. He's showing up. He's there for you. Yeah. So that's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. And, awesome. and and so when did you always see? So as from a kid, you started seeing colors and auras and things like that too. Yeah, that started more in the house. Mm-hmm. The house that I um, the house bought. from two thousand two. That 
Okay, so yeah. tell us about, you moved into a house in 2002. I've got to hear about this. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so in 2002, I moved into this house. And, the okay, so my first, it was a duplex. And I had purchased it. I don't even know why. It's part of my path. I don't believe in owning property, blah, blah, blah. But um, I purchased this property. And in 2002, one morning, uh, my downstairs tenant calls me. I hadn't even moved into the house yet. But I was going to move into the upper. And the lower tenant calls me and says, yeah, the guy upstairs shot himself in the foot, blah, blah, blah. So this is how I'm introduced to the house. So the police come, they take him to the hospital to, to recover from his foot injury. So I go into that unit that I'm going to be living in to, to assess any damage or how bad is this. Mm -hmm. And as I'm walking around, the door starts creaking. Mm -hmm. So I say, in, in, intuitively... Not even thinking about it, I go, you don't bother me, I won't bother you. Mm -hmm. And in my head, I'm going, who? What? <laughs> who doesn't bother me? I don't bother them. Um, so anyway, I then I, I realized at that moment, okay, there's obviously something or someone in this house because the door creaked, it stopped, mm -hmm. creaked again, and then creaked again. And I'm like, oh, great. Mm -hmm. This is wonderful. Once I moved into the house, I started hearing and seeing things that were very supernatural. Good, really good things, really amazing things. I mean, some really beautiful orbs and uh, um, uh, I believe one of the closets had a vortex, a vortex in it, uh -huh. um, which would explain all of the everything I saw in that house. Um, but then there were some, there were a lot of earthbound spirits also connected to the land all around there because this house is near a lake, mm -hmm. near, near Lake Michigan. And one night I was uh, being guided to do a release and to bring love and light in. And all of these Native American spirits started going up. Oh. Now, yes. Now, I would not mention that, and I would be personally a little bit skeptical, except about two weeks later, as if they were confirming this was true, the woman gardening two doors away said to me, I found this cannonball. It was a little bitty, about not that big cannonball in my yard as I was gardening. Uh -huh. So I thought, oh, well, that makes sense. This could have been a battleground way, way back in the day. Oh, yeah, Ooh. where there were a lot of deaths on the land. Yes, yeah. Especially near the lakes. Yeah. I think especially near the lakes. Mm -hmm. So I kept clearing that house and clearing that house and clearing that house, and there were two spirits that were very resistant in going home. Mm -hmm. And finally, I did get one of them to go. The other one might still be there. I'm not even sure. And, and what are some of the beautiful things that you saw besides orbs? What were some of the cool experiences that you Oh, had? my gosh. Um, so one of them was um, there was this blue, blue orb mm -hmm. that would come in and say, you know, it would show and I'd say, why are you here? And I would instantly hear love, but I would feel it to the point where I would just fall oh. because that amount of love is not something And you saw this blue orb with the naked eye. With my naked eye, uh -huh. yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, okay, and just a real quick, uh -huh. I just did an event this past Saturday uh -huh. at uh, the Aviation Theater, and prior to the event, I, I did a uh, Facebook Live, and I fanned out to the seat, yes. and as, as the, it's at the seat, an orb pops up in front of my camera, and follows it. Now, I didn't get to see this right away. Right. But as soon as I replayed it later, I'm like, oh, there's the orb. There's an orb. And it, it tried to stay in front of the camera while I had it oh. uh, fanned out on the seat. So that's really cool. But this one, I could, this was the first time I was seeing this blue orb. Mm -hmm. So I kept asking it. So one night I thought I was so brave and so cool. And I said, I said, 
show me who you are. And it started to expand. And by the time it was above the, the ceiling and below the full floor, I covered my head. Wow. Even though it was beautiful and peace and love, right. it was very overwhelming emotionally for me, like something this, would be, but it is for all of us. Truly, it is for all of us. So um, that orb, do you think it was an angel, a spirit, just an energy, or what? It's an enlightened being. Okay. That was probably never human, right? Right. Yeah, no, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, never It's human. interesting because I've interviewed so many uh, psychics and things, and there have been a couple times when an uh, orb would fly across this the screen in the Skype call, and then I would see that later in the in the video, which is very interesting. Love that. Now that blue orb is always still with me. I still I still see it. Um, it's it, every once in I catch it out of the corner of my eye, and when I'm like, "Come on, please show yourself again," it just kind of laughs at me. You're not ready yet. No. <laughs> like I'm like, "Okay, fine." So that's. Um, that's one of those things. I have to wait my turn again before it thinks I'm ready for the unfolding of it. And then um, did you move out of that house or are you still in the... I did. I finally moved out of that house. It was after my third near-death experience. Oh I moved God. out of that house. And then the next house I moved into, all it was, it was an apartment, all these visions and one of... I, I was not brought up with religion, which I'm really happy for because I have no preconceived uh, notions and no knowledge mm -hmm. of this, yes. like religious I stuff. get it. I, same with me. I wasn't brought up with religion, so I'm totally open to, to everything. That right. Way. And when I say something, when it comes through me, sometimes I'll quote scripture and I'm like, well, I don't know where that came from, but here we go. Right. And I and, and people are like, well, how do you know that? I'm like, I don't know, just because it's them. Yeah. So in the next house, the thing that surprised me the most, because I'm a big God girl. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge God girl. I'm all about God. I, I People say, do you believe in God? I'm like, no, I know God. Right. I know God. Mm -hmm. I know him like I know him like I know him. And I just call him in because that's what we do. Yeah. But Jesus kept appearing in the next place. Jesus' face was like, be right here with me oh. and I, telling me something. And I'd be like, okay, uh, hey, what's up? And I know it was Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I have, you have that feeling of knowing, right? Yeah, yeah. You just, you, you just, just know, know. You like, just know. that presence, that mm -hmm. presence. And even in the place I'm in right now, he's, <laughs> when I say this, people will, might be offended. Please don't be offended. He's always in my room at night. Oh, <laughs> Watching over you. <laughs> Not in my bed, in my room. And he's working. And I'll be like, hey, you're here. Because he's at the side of my bed doing, like, ushering something out and talking to people. And like, hey, hey, I have questions for you. And he'll turn and look and just go like, ah, I'm working. And turn back to whatever it is he's doing. I'm like, okay, I guess I'll ask another time. Mm -hmm. Well, but so yeah. the, the near-death experiences, it seems like so many, I have friends who were psychics and they, it opened up because of the near-death experiences. Did your, was that the catalyst to opening up? Did you have it as a kid, a near-death experience? I did. Um, the, the, I believe I did. Uh, I recall it in a dream. Mm -hmm. Now, like I said, I don't remember a lot of my childhood. But your mother but, could, could not confirm it or, or? No. Because no. was there was accident. a lot of, because it wasn't like you got hit by a truck or anything. Right, right. Um, and there was a lot of time I was not placed with my mother okay. as a child. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I don't, I don't recall a lot of that. But I do have this one recurring dream where I was very little and something happened. Mm -hmm. And I know it was a near death because I was floating above watching the person leave. Mm. I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then I saw myself in a, in a little closet. Uh -huh. So, um, but then the second one was in my 20s. Okay. And then the third one was, oh, 10 years, uh, 11 years ago. Uh -huh. 10 years ago, like November, I want to say. And were those accidents where you did really almost physically die? And then... Yeah, the second one was, um, was at the hands of someone. Mm -hmm. Where um, and when I came to, 
I got this very, very sharp warning, get out now. Mm-hmm. And then when I came to, I was like, yeah, I, I was like, Who's, I didn't know somebody else was here. Did somebody come? But it was them. Uh-huh. And the third one was an accident with a magician. Oh. Oh, I had, that one was a true accident. Was he I was, you in half? Oh, no, <laughs> no um, that probably would have been a better trick, though. Um, Houdini's box. He was coming out of Houdini's box and lost his balance. And this, like, 250-pound man grabbed onto a 100-pound girl uh-huh. to balance him oh. and then took me down under him. It's a good thing he landed on me. Yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, but my head hit the cement and bounced up. And that one I started going home. Uh-huh. And that one I was, uh, like, um, I had been on the, their garage floor for three hours mm-hmm. while they tried to figure out what to do with me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so as I was going, um, I, I was seeing, like, all of my family members. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey. Your family members who were deceased on the other on the other side? So no. I, it was my family members who were here. Oh, okay. I was like saying goodbye to them. Oh. I was like, hey, mom, sis, sis, hey. And I was like, for the whole three hours, there was absolutely no pain. I was in bliss. It was so happy. And then I saw my two dogs. Oh. Your dogs right? that had passed? Or the dogs? No. Were, oh, dogs. They, were, okay. Here. Okay. Oh. So then I. Um, and then you like wanted I, to come back probably for those dogs. I did. Yeah. I did. I said, <gasps> I can't go. No. I can't don't. leave them. Right. And instantly I was slammed back into my body. And for the first time in three hours, it that's the first time during the whole accident that I finally, I felt the pain. Mm. I was like, holy cow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So that was, um, and then after that accident, um, there was, there were some things that opened up spiritually for me, but they opened up because of, believe it or not, my anger from the accident. Mm -hmm. So I had to, and that anger was probably inside of me from a lot of things from my childhood and stuff, but that anger coming back in made me go back and just clean out everything, Mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Now, prior to that, I was seeing the orbs, and I was seeing a lot of things. But after I started clearing everything out, Mm -hmm. that's when I started seeing So energetically clearing, clearing, clearing all the negative emotions and all that, right? Yes, all the past, all the... Yeah, cutting cords and clearing things probably, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I used a lot of self-hypnosis for that, too. A lot of self-hypnosis Well, when you're also a healer, and I read that you can heal people just through your eyes. Just when you see somebody out and about that's in pain, you can do that. And when did that happen? And I want to hear about Uh, that. Yeah, that's really, you know, I didn't even, that, I, I want to be honest here. I have always, um, like, I'm very... In, uh, like a very emotional person so when I like when somebody's hurting and I hug them I'm just like oh my god um and just trying to be like fix this uh, but the healing thing I saw someone else do it on tv and something inside of me said but but we can all do that that's not a it's it we can all do that so then I during one of my healing groups I said I'm gonna do this tell me what happens and I just started doing it, uh-huh. and pe- tears were coming out of people's eyes, and they were, I could see these, like, white tubes coming over them, energetic tubes uh-huh. coming over the people. I could see black specks leaving people, and that's, like, not, every. whenever you say black, people think demons, ah, it's negativity, it's old emotions, it's, right. it's stuff that needs to go. Yeah. So these white, like, almost... Um, you know when they go, beam me up, Scotty, mm-hmm. <laughs> like the tube deck of the energy tube? It was like that. These white tubes were coming over them, and all this stuff was leaving, and they were having this really emotional um, experience. One one person had gone back to a past life, mm-hmm. and something was instantly 
get fixed. And another person felt them working on the back of his brain. Another person, like just amazing. So then that, that three minutes later, three minutes later, I go, okay, come on out. Tell me what some of your experiences were. They started telling me, I'm like, oh. That's so awesome. That's almost more awesome than what I was seeing. So I started telling them what I was seeing. Yeah. I said, want to go again? They're like, yeah. yeah. So I did it again. And the second time, they all had another experience, and it was a different experience. Mm. So the person who had the past life healing mm-hmm. during the first one, during the second one, there was something completely different that happened for that person. And just with the people with the tears, I would say, so what are the tears for? They're like, I don't know. There was just all this love and these tears were coming out from all of the love. Uh-huh. And I was just like, oh, that's so awesome. So, so, sometimes- so, so can you do this for people over Skype if they want a session with you, the healing? Yes. Okay. Yes. I can do it. And I can do the, the, the look of love. Mm-hmm. I can do that. Um, even when it, the beautiful thing is, if somebody comes into my office and they're just frantic, mm-hmm. I can just start doing this. Mm-hmm. And it's technically it's not me. Right. That's why I can do it over Skype. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, oh, you have the most beautiful. I see the most beautiful. <laughs> I have. I have um, above your head, there's the most beautiful like aura. Right now, above your head, it's so gorgeous. Anyway, okay, what so color? let me get what back. Co- to- what color? It starts off right at the top, right at your base. It starts off with white, and then as it goes up, it's blue, and then it's it's going out. It's just so gorgeous. Woo. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yes, because if I have the intention, it's all the intention, the intention of me and the intention of you. So if you have the intention of a healing and I have the intention of being the vessel of that healing, mm-hmm. then they will come in and they will start that for you right away. So let's say, because I just want to, you know, for anybody who wants to contact you to do this. So let's say we're going to do a session and then I would say, okay, um, either maybe I could say heal whatever needs to be healed that you see, or maybe I could say, look, I had a really bad childhood and I want to clean that up. Let's do that. Can you kind of set an intention exactly what you want cleared or I, both ways? We can. You can set the intention, but I always say this. You might get what you want. It's better if you get what you need. Okay. So they know, yeah, so, they, they know what right. they know what you need. We need. <sighs> the guides know what we need. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we think like after my ankle, after my last near death accident, everyone I went to, I said, just heal my ankle, just heal my ankle. I want to be able to run again, just heal my ankle. And that was the last thing that needed to be healed. My ankle wasn't healing because of the emotional stigma mm-hmm. of all that had happened with the accident and after the accident. Mm-hmm. So that all needed to be healed, and then my ankle would naturally heal. So sometimes we think it's this, but it's really that. And so um, something else that I saw that on your website that I was really, uh, you know, fascinated about, you said while helping your friends with their new businesses, you could just give them pages and pages of ideas and you don't even know anything about their business. So let's say somebody is trying to start a business or their business is stagnant and then they contact you, they want to have a session with you and we can sit here and you would just start channeling ideas for them. Absolutely. So that that part is so amazing because I don't need the information. Like I said, it all comes through me. So if somebody's getting ready to start a business or is is really struggling in their business, they'll come and see me or they'll call me or we'll Skype. And all of a sudden, all these ideas start coming through. And I'm like, just keep writing, record this. I'm going to keep going. Or if I have a little bit of time, I can sit down and just write out plan after plan after plan for them. Yeah. And if they implement them, they will do amazing. Oh, that, amazing. Is, that is exciting. I know a lot of people who would want to do that. Because some people are, we have, a, like for me, I've got my business, but I've, I'm a Gemini. So I've got all these other ideas. I've got things going, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And my husband says, you're too scattered. You've got to focus. So it would be great to, to have a session with you. And then you kind of... Get, probably the guides will come through with some clear-cut ways what you should focus on more and and all of that. 
Absolutely. And I'm a Gemini also, so hey. Uh, June, June 11th. <laughs> When's yours? Second. June, June second. All right. Well, yeah, we're real Geminis right in the middle there. Yes, <laughs> right in the middle. I always say I'm a Gemini's Gemini. My twins have twins. Yes. I mean, it's like there's two people in here, so imagine all the things I'm trying to get done, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Which in, in one way, in one way, I mean, it's very exciting. I, I have so many interests. Another way, though, is sometimes things get done half-assed, you know, because there's too many direction, oh, yeah. directions instead uh, of just, you know, jack of all trades, master of none kind of thing. Absolutely. And it's so hard because we have ideas faster than we can do things with them. Right, right. Yep. But, exactly. Uh, but it's, we're yeah. fun. Hey, we're fun, you know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. one other thing I want to ask you is about the reconnection. So you, yeah. you had the, I had the reconnection, uh, my, my, um, Reiki master, uh, attuned me and I'm a Reiki master and I've had different attunements and, and things have opened up for me since the attunements. It's been wonderful, but the reconnection, I don't notice any, I, maybe I, there is some things going on, but I just didn't notice anything where some people will say my whole life changed or this, or I felt that what happened for you with with that and t just tell us briefly for people who, who don't know what the reconnection is it's okay. an energetic so attunement it is energy it is an energy it's a form of energy healing and the reconnect there's there's the reconnected healing and then there's the reconnection oh okay so, so the, that's two different things well yeah the healings will start you off on your life plan start to open things up for you and again that's where you might think this needs to be healed, it's this. So they do a minimum of three healings that allow you to start um, just that repair. And it's, it goes on and on and on. Now, the reconnection is where we touch. Uh, we don't physically touch, but we go over the acupuncture points of the body mm -hmm. with energy and reopen them, mm -hmm. which is supposed to connect you to those... Um, lines and points and the planet and the universe again. So if we're shut, like, let's say this, this point is shut down. When we do this, it reopens. And then that energy can come from the earth and the universe to reconnect again. Yeah. The reconnection really, I've seen so many people get the reconnection and their life just change. I always say to them, are you sure you want to do this? Changes might come in that you might not be knowing you want yet. Mm -hmm. And they'll go, of course I do. And then, of course, <laughs> we do the reconnection. And six months later, their their whole life has turned around. Mm -hmm. So I've heard their that. life was probably pretty much on, on track, maybe. Already. So just heightened it, maybe. Uh -huh. Enhanced it, maybe. Right. So Interesting. Okay, yeah. Interesting. And um, so, all right, fantastic. Well, I, I just wanted people to get a taste and, and see what you do. And this is, and also you've written some books? Yes, I've written, I've channeled four books. Oh! I channeled them. It, uh, they, they are, I, they're not really meditation books. They're kind of evolving books. Mm -hmm. So if you work on the one word of the day, the way the book says, you will notice huge changes. Now, uh, th this past weekend, I did a book signing and one of the women said, so I don't get this. I said, okay, so just open to any page of any book. So she picks up a book, she opens it. I go, now follow what it says in the book with that word. She did it in these tears just coming out, oh. out of her eyes. I said, that's the book for you. Wonderful. That's your book. Beautiful. Yes. And I've, I've got all the links below for that and everything. So I know a lot of people are going to be wanting to contact you and work well, with you. you. So it's so exciting. Thank you so much, Tony, for coming. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank Bye, everybody. And, and let us know your experiences with energy and what you've seen in the comments below. And like this video so other people can find it. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Have a great day.